Okay, a uh, new find here uh, that's just a continuation of finds in a cave in uh, Morocco here. It says the oldest Homo sapiens bones ever found shake foundations of human story and the human history, I guess. Uh, the idea that modern humans evolved in East Africa 200,000 years ago is challenged by extraordinary discovery of a 300,000-year-old remains in a Morocco mine. Now, what's strange about this is that, well, maybe it's not really strange, but uh, I, I just, you know, like me, I'll throw something in there all the time. And uh, this is right out in the area, not too far away from what we believe now may be Atlantis and where Atlantis was, uh, and even uh, Herodotus's maps show you that the Atlas Mountains that are there were named after it, and so on. So this might be something that's there. Now, I'm sure there's been enough excavation and looking around for anything, and especially at the Eye of the Sahara. And uh, I just want to interject, I don't think they're going to find anything fu futuristic there in any way, shape, or form. I really don't. Um, in fact, I don't think Atlantis was as futuristic as people give credit for. I think it was quite futuristic for then, because then you had Mesopotamia doing a little, Egypt doing a little, and Greece doing a little, and everybody else was kind of not quite going on, and they kind of knew that these people that had invaded and done all these things in the past were more advanced than they were probably then. Now, we look at it today as being like these people must have had gleaming skyscrapers and all this stuff, and, and uh, I think that's just odd conjecture and taking it too far. You can imagine somebody being like a bushman or something going into ancient Sumeria, and they would have thought that they were walking into a Atlantis-type place. But anyhow, I, I, I interject, but this isn't too far from there. They'll show you in the map, and I'll kind of show you where it's at here, but uh, that's a reconstruction of the skull that had been done in pieces. Uh, of course, it's just collapsed, and all they did was put it all back together like they've done. Fossils recovered from an old mine on a desolate mountain in Morocco have rocked one of the most enduring foundations of the human story. That Homo sapiens, modern man, arose in a cradle of humankind in East Africa around 200,000 years ago, which that got pushed back quite a bit, and I think the true number they gave was 196,000. I mean, if you just want to round it, you can. And then they have that before plus and minus, I think, which on that date was 4,500. So it could be like a 192,000 to a little over 200. And then people nowadays just go out 200. Archaeologists unearthed the bones of at least five people at Jebel Arud, who, which is where we already had the other one at, a former barite mine 100 kilometers west of Marrakesh in excavations that lasted years now. They knew the remains were old, but were stunned when dating tests revealed that a tooth and stone tools found with the bones were about 300,000 years old now. My reaction was a big wow, said Jean-Jacques Hublin, a senior scientist on the team at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig. I was expecting them to be old, but not that old. I mean, he was probably expecting them to be the same age, pardon me, I had pizza. They uh, expected them to be the same age, or not much more. You know, that maybe they'll get a little slightly older carbon date. Must have been some people there, but no, it, it just, that layer apparently just takes it quite a bit further. Hublin said the extreme age of the bones make them the oldest known specimens of modern humans and possesses a major challenge to the idea that the earliest members of our species evolved in a Garden of Eden in East Africa 100,000 years later. And uh, w what we're looking at here is they're calling it a modern human. I want to interject here that whenever I was a kid, they kind of let you know that Cro-Magnon was not really a modern human and that modern humans were only around four or 5,000 B.C. And of course, archaeology and things have changed through these years here to where they realized that Cro-Magnon man, some 38 to 40,000 years or more, was actually modern man, that that's modern man, and then if we're going to say everyone on the planet's modern man, that bifacial blade technology and all these things that they had, that pretty much set, suits it. Well, archaeology from that point on said some people don't quite fit under that. They just don't quite, there's a few criteria that they're missing. So where would it go back to where we're talking about modern man then, where everybody on the planet is 
at what you would call modern man. And it jumps back to these people that originally were reading at 90, 80, 90,000 BC, which is like twice the amount. And of course they found these same people now going up to 196, 200,000 BC. So these people, what this is basically saying is these people had the technology at 300,000 BC or shortly after that everybody else on the planet had somewhat recently, right? So this gives us a completely different picture of the evolution of uh, our species. It goes further back in time, but also the very process of evolution is different to what we thought, Hublin told the Guardian. It looks like our species was already present, probably all over Africa by 300,000 years ago. If there was a Garden of Eden, it might be the size of the whole continent. And indeed, they have found Caucasian remains from Central Africa, Green Sahara, down in Hofmeyer sites, which I've done videos on at 38 and 40,000 BC, Blombos Cave, way down in the point and stuff, showing red ochre symbolic burial materials and so on that they find in all the old Cro-Magnon burials and even some Neanderthals. So it's kind of neat. This Jebel Erud shows a lot of things here. Jebel Harood was thrown, has thrown up puzzles for scientists since fossilized bones were first found in the site in the 1960s. Remains found in 1961 and 62 and stone tools recovered with them were attributed to Neanderthals at first, considered to be only about 40,000 years old. At the time, a popular view held that modern humans evolved from Neanderthals. Today, the Neanderthals are considered to be a sister group that lived alongside and even bred with our modern human ancestors to a slight degree. Uh, your common Caucasoid or anybody other than Sub-Saharan Africa is generally have uh, one to six percent Neanderthal DNA, and your average there is probably two to four. But anyhow, um, so we're looking here at where we're at, and Jibel Arud is here. And if we want to find the Eye of the Hair, it's about right in here at this little crotch point right in there, right? Off the edge of Africa. And where we're at on the major map here, if you'll look, is just up on the point, really real close to where it goes across to Gibraltar and so on, you know, the, the pillars here, which is exactly at Tangier right here. Stood there before. So... In fresh excavations at the Jibel Harood site, Hublin and others found more remains, including a partial skull, a jawbone, teeth, and limb bones belonging to three adults, a juvenile and a child aged about eight years old, the remains which resemble modern humans more than any other species. We were recovered from the base of an old limestone cave that had its roof smashed in during mining operations at the site. Alongside the bones, researchers found sharpened flint tools, a good number of gazelle bones and lumps of charcoal perhaps left over from fires that warmed those who once lived here. It's rather a desolate landscape but on the horizon you have the Atlas Mountains with snow on top and it's very beautiful says Hublin. When we found the skull and mandible I was emotional. There are, they are only fossils but they have been human beings. And very quickly, you make a connection with these people who lived and died 300,000 years ago. Here's a jawbone that they show of it, and it does seem to be a slightly more robust than the current people's jawbones. But, uh, you know, having to chew and eat harder and everything could easily pull off what they're talking about. Now, the first complete adult mandible discovered at the site of Jabarud, the bone morphology and dentation, so teeth pattern display a combination of archaic and evolved features kind of neat and uh teeth were in pretty good shape too amazing all these old people have the pretty pretty damn good teeth makes you think they had fluoride from somewhere or... anyhow um scientists have long looked into east africa as the birthplace of modern humans until the latest findings from Jibaru, the oldest known remnants of our species were found at Omo Kibish in Ethiopia and dated to 195,000 years ago. Um, oh, until Jibaru, I was fixing to say, because Jibaru popped at 196, I thought. Now, I thought. Maybe I was wrong, or maybe I'm confusing the Kibish data. I, I don't think so. Other fossils and genetic evidence all point to an African origin for modern humans. And we've always had this out of Africa theory. And uh, so people have tried to conjecture us and say, well, then they're all one species and everything. But I think we easily see now that a uh, long, long time ago, we may have come from a common 
ancestor, but then in between there's a lot of differences. There's a ghost hominid species that are in Negroids that are not evident in any of the Caucasians that came up out and these people here even. And so it shows you they had an interaction with something like a Neanderthal that all the Caucasians, Asians, and people that came up out of Africa did not have, so it's something slightly different. Uh, in the first two papers published, um, in Nature, on Wednesday, the researchers described how they compared the freshly excavated fossils with those of modern humans. Neanderthals and ancient human relatives that lived up to 1.8 million years ago. Facially, the closest match was with modern humans. The lower jaw was similar to modern Homo sapiens too, but much larger. The most striking difference was the shape of the brain cage, which was much more elongated than that of humans today. Hmm? It suggests that Humlin that the modern brain evolved in Homo sapiens and was not inherited from a predecessor. Uh, there's this thought that they said a lot of times that uh, Neanderthal had larger brain cases than we currently did, and due to that interaction, Cro-Mags did too, and then now we're stepped down, we developed a better brain and then consolidated it, made it slightly smaller. It's showing here that maybe that's a contrast in terms because they had a larger cranial case. And of course we see all the elongated heads that we've been talking about here lately that seem to hail from the Black Sea region. Even the ones over in uh, South America seem to hail from there with their genetics. Apart from being a more stout and muscular, the adults at Jebel Arud look similar to people alive today. The face of the specimen we found is the face of someone you could meet in the tube in London, Hublin said. In a second paper, the scientists lay out how they dated the stone tools to between 280 and 350,000 years old with fluoroscopy and new techniques and a lone tooth to 290,000 years ago. So it's just edging all over that number. And here's some of the tools that they show in the bifacial blade technology. Some of these are looking very arrowheadish and even having a Clovis dent set off into them. But a lot of other ones are probably knockoffs or carving tools. And you hold onto this, and this side right here is all flinched. And it's the way that they do their flinting that shows you a slight difference. People have gotten quite good to the napping and the way that they do things like this. Uh, the picture says the tools were found were based on napping te techniques called lavalois, uh, adding to the realization that the sophisticated way of shaping tools originated earlier than thought. Right? So now they've even got the napping technique of later shown farther back in time too. So the remains of more individuals may yet be found at the site, but precisely, precisely what they were doing there is unclear. Analysis of the flint tools show that the stones came not from the local area, but from a region 50 kilometers south of Jebel Harud, closer to where we're talking about as far as the Eye of the Sahara. Uh, why did they come here? Well, they brought their toolkit with them and they seem to have exhausted it, Hublin said. The tools they brought with them have been resharpened, resharpened again, and resharpened again. They did not produce new tools on the spot. It might be that they did not stay that long, or maybe it was an area they would come to do something specific. We think they were hunting gazelles, all the gazelle bones there, of course, and uh, they were making a lot of fires. So it was a meeting place, perhaps part of the happy hunting grounds, and a place that they would make... You know, it's, a, it's the cabin in the woods. Hublin concedes that scientists have too few fossils to know whether modern humans had spread to the four corners of Africa 300,000 years ago yet. But the speculation is based on what the scientists see as familiar features in a 260,000-year-old skull from Floresbad in South Africa. But he also finds the theory compelling, and of course I've told you about Hofmeyer sites. He says, the idea is that early Homo sapiens dispersed around the continent and elements of human modernity appeared in different places and so different parts of Africa contributed to the emergence of what we call modern humans today. John McNabb, an archaeologist at the University of Southampton, said, one of the big questions about the emergence of anatomically modern humans has been, did our body plan evolve quickly or slowly? This seems to suggest the later. It seems our faces became modern long before our skulls took the uh, our skulls took on the shape that they have today. 
And what he's talking about is prognathism and so on. It seems like we knocked the prognathism off quite early into it as part of the modern human thing. That's one of the criteria of that is prognathism and so on. And uh, you can still see a pronounced brow ridge that's going on here. And that keeps going through till Cro-Magnon, but just fades away pretty much. So um, you can see this indicates the brain shape and brain function. And it's not far off of what we have now today, but slightly elongated. There's some interesting possibilities here, too. The tools of the people at Jibberl Rood were making were based on a napping technique called Levaloas, a sophisticated way of shaping stone tools. The date of 300,000 years ago adds to a growing realization that Levaloas originates a lot earlier than we thought. So this is not just changing one facet of archaeology here, but now the people that are into stone tools are having to Toss that book in the trash and go, and here we go again. Is Jebel Arud telling us that this new technology is linked to the emergency of hominin line that will lead to modern humans? Does the new find, pimp, uh, find imply that there was more than one hominin lineage in Africa at this time? It really stirs the pot. Lee Berger, whose team recently discovered the 300,000-year-old Homo nalide, an archaic-looking human relative near the cradle of humankind World Heritage Site outside of Johannesburg in South Africa, said dating the Jibel Arud bones was thrilling, but is unconvinced that modern humans lived all over Africa so long ago. They've taken two data points and not drawn a line between them, but, but a giant map of Africa. So just finding one way down here and one way up here that really seem exactly the same, you can't necessarily put a blanket on it yet, but you can sure say there's a whole lot of this here and a lot of that there and that they are similar. So it does tie things together. If you had two or three more sites that you could see, then that would probably do it. Although I'm guessing they're correlating the data of the site that they just spoke of there and Hofmeyer and so on and saying, oh, this is kind of a variations on a theme situation, not exactly the same. Well, of course, we're looking at hundreds of thousands of years different, too, people. So that's an, another oddity and an odd thing, too. I mean, if, if you just took a group of people from, I don't know, Houston, Texas, and you took 100 people out of Houston, Texas, and then did all their skulls, they're not going to all be the same either. Some are going to have oval-shaped heads. Some are going to have more round. Some have more flatted. Some have a little more sloped. There'll be a lot of variation. It's not going to be like, hey, these guys all look like one guy, you know. John Shea an archaeologist at Stony Brook University in New York who was not involved in the study said he was cautious whenever researchers claim they found the oldest of anything and I think I spoke about that earlier in a vid it's best not to judge by the big splash they make when they're first announced but rather to wait and see some years down the line whether the waves from that splash haven't altered the shorelines he said adding that stone tools can move around in cave sediments and settle in layers of a different age and uh, he's saying that, but he wasn't one of the investigators. They made a mention there that they talked about the layers of sedimenting. And I was real interested in that because if it's a cave up on the hills and we're looking for this big inundation of water, this massive flood or this asteroid impact that caused a 400-foot tidal wave, it should inundate that cave there, right? Well, it would have inundated it some 10,500 B.C., and this is so far deep below that. None of this ever got churned up. This was already packed down and too far below the soil, up and in a cave, down and into itself. And so there wasn't enough disturbance to probably cause anything. Um, uh, you'd get more disturbance out of an earthquake than you would out of being inundated by water on something like that, probably. Shea was also uneasy with the scientists... Uh, combining fossils from different individuals and comparing reconstructions of complete skulls from fragmentary remains. Such chimeras could look very different from the individuals on which they are based, he said. And I see this in the other paper, too, where they had tried to take, they realized all these people were the same, and even though this guy's missing a femur bone and one of his arm bones and some of his toes and so on like that, they took from the other people and said, well, here's what a whole skeleton looks like. And they're like, oh, yo, you know, and well, hold on a second. We'll just take those pieces right back and you're still staring at somebody that has these traits. Some people freak out on little things like that and they act like it made a big difference and it really doesn't because all you do is just take them back away and you go, ta-da. Now, what would you do at this point? Well, you'd take those and put them over here and make, ha-ha, never mind, let's continue. 
For me, claiming these remains are homo sapiens stretches the meaning of that term a bit, Shea added. These humans who lived between 50 and 300,000 years ago are morphologically diverse bunch. Whenever we find more than a couple of them from the same deposits, such as Ormo Kabish and Hertu uh, in Ethiopia or Sakol and Kavza in Israel, their morphology is all over the place with, within and between samples. Yeah, it's all over the place a little bit, and you can see some variations going, but also those dates are all over the place, too. Someone has to be able to go, okay, well, what if we took the skulls and morphed back and forth? Let's put them on a morph program and run them through time, what we have here, and see if you can see, oh, well, that kind of looks like those, you know, kind of change. People aren't willing to do that. Some people are so balkative. And it's good to be skeptical, people. It is. And it's good to stand on a fence. Whenever somebody shows you information, everybody likes to stand on a fence and then talk crap and then try to be convinced from that point. But Jessica Thompson, an anthropologist at Emory University in Atlanta, said the new fossils show just how incredible the Jerob Iru site is. These fossils are the rarest of the rare because the human fossil record from this time period in Africa is so poorly representative. They give us a direct look at what early members of our species look like as well as their behavior. You might also look twice at the brow ridges if you saw them on a living person. You might be face to, it might not be a face to face you'd see every day, but you would definitely recognize it as human, she said. It really does look like in, like in Africa especially, but also globally. Our evolution was characterized by numerous differences in different species, all living at the same time and possibly even in the same places, or separated from each other and not having interaction in a lot of cases. That's quite interesting there, and I do want to show you, I guess, the uh, other, other one I talked about, how uh, the oldest Negroid skull, so we're going to throw that in here right at the end, I guess. And... Uh, mm. There was a revision done on it just recently, and I did a video on it myself, uh, where they're saying that the, uh, well, let me see if I can get in here about right. Well, this guy said he previously posted that the 6,500-year-old Asilar skeleton discovered in Mali was the earliest example of a Negroid African. But it turns out there was a slightly older skull with Negroid features, but not a modern Negroid from further south and in, in West Africa at Iwu Ileru in Nigeria that seems to be a much better candidate. Now in 1978 they had found what they said that the oldest known skeleton of West Africa was found in Nigeria at Iwu Ileru is a Negroid man stated to be about 9250 BC give or take 150 so maybe 9100 to 94. But in 2002 a human burial described as proto-Negroid or non monitored was found at the base of succession at Iwo Liro at a date of 11,200, give or take 200, so 11,000 before present, or about 9,000 BC. And that's what we've kind of been going off of. In fact, I thought it had gone to like 11,600 instead of 200. Maybe that's the slight variation or the revision on it. And they tell you a single human skeleton some 12,000 years ago in 2005 from the lowest level of Iwo Liro has been described as already showing specifically Negroid features, but by saying that it says that it's a proto-Negroid and not had quite turned into one yet. And so, uh, kind of a neat thing though here, and uh, all of these uh, materials that they're showing, and what we really just need, I guess at this point, is perhaps another um, one or two to be found and if another one or two sites are found, I mean, this is rare up in a cave and so on uh, to be able to preserve this. And if they find one or two other sites, then they'll be able to confirm this that much better. But uh, at this point, it's already somewhat confirmed. And what is confirmed is that they said this is a Homo sapiens and that it dates back to about 315,000 years. Like, share, and subscribe, guys, and enjoy. More to come on this. As soon as the full paper comes out, I'll go over it and try to sift through it and see if there's anything else to add to this. Peace.